<laughs> George, you've been described as one of the best paid footballers in England. It's reported that you get £160 a week. Do you see the time coming when footballers will get even more than that? Well, at the present, at the present rate, you know, like trans transfers and everything now, I have, they're, they're fantastic when you think of, say, ten years ago. I mean, a, a top-class player ten years ago, like, say, Albert Quicksall, who we bought, was 45000 And in such a short time, the, the highest fee's gone to £125,000. Do you see footballers being paid uh, film star wages now? Um, not exactly film star wages, but they're they're pretty comparable with you know a lot of well any business. It's a, it is an entertainment now. Football. I've always said that it's a, it's one of the biggest ent entertainments in the world. It's said that you're worth two hundred thousand pounds to your club. Now, does this t tremendous price on your head scare you at times? Uh, not really. I don't think I'm worth anything because I'm never going to leave and nobody's ever going to buy me. So, but uh, it doesn't. I don't think it bothers any players. I think this is a uh, exaggerated among all, every, uh, among everyone. I don't think it bothers anybody what he thinks he's worth. Well, do you think that because you are one of the costliest players in football, this singles you out for special attention from uh, defenders? It might do if I didn't play for any club other than the, the club I'm with, because we've uh, we have four or five, I think, world-class players in our team. So. It, it helps to take it off me a little bit, I think. It was report. It was stated uh, by Joe Mercer last week that Manchester United are one of the teams which play nothing but football. In other words, Matt Busby says football and nothing else. Is this true? Yeah. Well, we're never t we're never told before a game to go out and play it any special way. We're just he just goes through the, the the opposing team individually and goes out and tells us to enjoy our football, and that's what we try to do. And you think this is the reason why Manchester United is so successful? I think it's. I think it's, well, any successful team, like Tottenham in '60, '61, they 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 weren't told how to play or went out and had plans or anything. They just went out and played football and enjoyed themselves. George, you've come a long, long way now, and you're still only 21. What would you feel like if you suddenly had to give up football? <laughs> I don't know. I, I never think of giving up. I never think that it's possible to be injured. I just. I'll, as soon as one game's over, I look forward to the next game, and I, I never ever think about giving it up. If you did give it up, what 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 would you do? Would you concentrate on your your businesses? Uh, well, when I do give it up, I hope I have enough money not to have to concentrate on anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, George. How did you get uh, into this uh, boutique business? Um, well, the f first shop, which we opened a couple of years ago. Uh, and I'm in partnership with another another bloke from Manchester. Another well-known player. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, Mike Somerby that is, but this is a shoe shop. Oh, but yeah. the first shop, I'm in partnership with a, a friend of mine, and uh, he was already in the business. And uh, I was when I first started playing at 17, I was getting quite a bit of publicity. So I thought, you know, time put it to an advantage. And uh, we were lucky; we got the right sort of stuff, and the, the kids loved it. So it's gone. It's got it's got better as it went, went along. And this is. Due to, to the tremendous name that you've created in football. Well, I don't think it's only because of the name. I mean, we don't sell rubbish just because it's my name. You know, we sell good stuff as well. In, in fact, does running two boutiques affect your football in any, in, in any way? Not really. I I don't let anything interfere with football because it's it's put me where I am. So I can't really afford to let anything get in the way of it. But uh, my partner, he's, he really knows the, the business, you know, and he, he looks after it all for me. How do you sort of split your time running your boutiques and playing football? Do you draw a line anywhere? Uh, well, it's, it's actually it's quite easy, you know, because we train from 10 o'clock until 12 in the mornings, and that leaves me free from 12 all afternoon, so I just go to the shops and uh, sort of, I don't sell much, but I just <laughs> mess around. <laughs> You're there anyway. How, how does Matt Busby feel about yourself and the other players? Uh, running these other businesses? I'm not quite sure. Well, he says he thinks it's a good thing, but I don't know if he does or not. But I think it, it helps if it takes your mind off the game a little bit. Because uh, I used to get a bit sort of fed up, you know, in the afternoons with nothing else to do. I mean, once we finished training, there was, I was walking about town and I hadn't a clue what to do. And it's, it's given me another interest. And it makes life more interesting altogether. Very valuable one, yeah. too. One of your other talents is singing. In fact, you at one time intended to uh, pursue a pop singer's career, is this right? Uh, well, <laughs> other people tried to get me to sing, but... I'm not going to ask you to <laughs> sing, but I'm wondering why you didn't uh, pursue this career. 
Well, if you'd heard me sing, you'd know. <laughs> you, George, you do feel then it's important for uh, footballers like yourself to have an out, outside interest. I think it's very important. Every every club you go to now, I think you find well over half their team are involved in some sort of business, and I think it's a good thing. You you play league football, and very very soon you'll be playing cup football. What is the difference? Uh, well, in our club, the most important thing to us is the, is league football, because we reckon that it's 42 games a year, played in all sorts of conditions and. I mean, a cup game, it's death or glory, you know, you, you could be in it one week and out the next, but a, le a league championship, is it's taking over 42 games, and you've got to be consistent for 42 games, and uh, we feel it's a bigger achievement to win the league. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel about uh, getting a, a good draw in the cup, having a jolly good run in the cup, and at the same time you're running for league championship honours? You know, how does a manager decide which one he's going for? Uh, well, like I said, I think some clubs have got the pick because by the time the cup comes round, they haven't they haven't got a chance in the league. But with us, it's pretty difficult because we're always near, pretty near the top, so we can't really decide. We just take every game as it comes. It is it league football? Uh, is there any difference between the sort of roughness in league football and and, and the roughness in, in cup football? Is it a harder type of football, the cup? I think maybe cup football pretends to be. Uh, it, it could become a little, well, not rougher, but harder because there's so much at stake. I mean, like I say, teams who haven't got a chance of the league, they're bound to try a little bit harder. I'm wondering what you think of this draw against Spurs. Well, after last year, when, if you remember, Norwich knocked us out at Old Trafford, <laughs> we, we actually wanted a, a, a first division team anywhere because there's no shame in being beaten by them. But so, uh, we're hoping to, well, I've been in three semi finals so far, so I well, hope to do it this time. Well, let's hope you're in the final as well, George. Okay. Thank you very much.